Now that was so weak. I'm going to. Got to start somewhere, right? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 14. We'll get going. I did want to share. We shared with several of you and don't want to leave anybody out, but we've been asking for prayer for our oldest daughter, Neely. She's trying to get into optometry school, and she's got some interviews, and she's had one already, and she just found out uh, Wednesday night right after church, we got the call that she got accepted uh, to the university in San Antonio Incarnate Word, so that was a big deal for her, and so we're thankful. <laughs> we are thankful because we don't have to listen to the stress and the other stuff, but anyway. John chapter 14 says this, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places or many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Pray with me. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for loving us, God. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would come, that we would hear you in a very personal way today calling us to come to you. we all in a different place. We all have something different going on in our life. But Lord, we know that you're above all of that, and let us hear your voice. Meet us here today with your Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. So we talk about pursuing God. If you were with us, we started last week talking about pursuing God. And so I guess the first question I would ask you is, what does it mean to you to go after God? What does it mean to go after him? We talk about pursuing. We talk about pressing on. And, and, and when we think about God and we realize that God has done it all, you know, we get frustrated and disappointed with certain things. But when we step back and realize that God has done it all, everything that you see, everything that you have, everything that you're able to do is because of God. We're nothing without him. He's done it all. He's given us life. He, he designed us in our mother's womb. He gave us the breath of life that put air in our lungs. When we come out, our heart beats. Everything works because of God. He's he given us salvation. He's given us opportunity, the plans that he has for us. He's empowered us. He speaks the truth to us. He's done everything. Yet, overall, in general, this is what we do. We live our lives. We do our own thing. We go our own way many times. And if we are honest, we even do it in church. Hear me out. We show up sometimes. We do what we do. We listen. We talk a little bit. And then we leave. We go home. We go back into our life, doing our own thing. And so church becomes this thing that I do that makes me feel good. And I come to church because it, I feel good, you know. Maybe I didn't get nothing out of it, but I just, I feel good, you know. And so uh, Christianity becomes this, this thing that about being good, about being better than I once was, or not as bad as someone else. And I'm trying to keep some of these rules, so, you know, I must be good. But often, we've talked about this, oftentimes our lives aren't changed. We're not really different. Our, our, our inside, we're, 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 just, we're just kind of tolling through it, you know? And so because of that, eventually, I'm, I'm trying to, to do good, but it really hasn't changed me. And, and, and so eventually what happens is I fall away. And here's my question. Could it be that sometimes we don't, we don't know what we're doing? 
We don't really know where we're going. We're just, we're just kind of bouncing around, and they said this is good, and they said this is a good place to do it, and, and so we're just, we're just kind of coming, and we're going, but we really don't know what we're doing. We really don't know where we're going, and, and I think it's because we haven't fell in love with God yet. We're still holding up barriers and parameters, and, and we haven't really fell in love because that's just odd, right? That's just odd. To fall in love with God, I mean, I'm struggling to fall in love with my wife, right? How can I fall in love with God? And especially for a man, because we're tough and we're macho. And yeah, I believe in God, but I'm not going to get ooey gooey. And what are you talking about falling in love with God? How do I know? Because I've been there. I thought about this stuff at a time in my life. And God was trying to penetrate and break down. I'm like, well, this is just odd. You know how can I fall in love with God? And so what happens is, we don't have this first love of God really coming into our life and we're trying to do good and we want to be better and we find ourselves tired and we find ourselves frustrated and we find ourselves irritated and we find ourselves caught up in doing. We're doing stuff, but we're not being. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, let me put it to you like this. When Jesus came... He didn't do stuff so that he would be Jesus. He didn't do stuff so that he would get to heaven. He didn't do stuff to prove that he was somebody. He did those things because that's who he was. When he came, he was the Son of God. When he was here, he was the Son of God. He is the Son of God forever. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus doesn't change. He just is. Many times we're trying to do something. We're trying to attain something. We're trying to gain our righteousness instead of just receiving it, letting his love change my heart and recognizing, like the song says, that I am a child of God. I'm not trying to prove it anymore. I'm not trying to be good enough anymore. This is just who I am not because of what I've done but because of everything that Jesus did for me and we're showing up and we turn it into this I'm doing stuff and really I'm showing up and I'm doing and I'm participating but really I'm manipulating God because I'm expecting because now I'm coming to church that my life is going to be easier and I'm going to be blessed and everything's going to go good and I'm going to get a raise and I'm going to get all this stuff and we're really we're trying to manipulate God and then we're frustrated when it doesn't happen the way I want it because I'm not winning every ball game because I'm not making more money than everybody else and I, what I'm doing instead of just being a child of God. So today when we read this, this passage, Jesus had just told them and he had spoken to them about what was going to happen. He's telling them, hey, look, one of you, one of my main guys, you're fixing to betray me. And they're going to arrest me. They're going to do everything they're going to do. And he's telling them, and so just hear me because I'm fixing to go away. I'm fixing to go away. And so like us, they begin to struggle with this unknown future. What do you mean, man? We've been with you. What are we going to do? How's this going to work? What's going on? And Jesus begins to comfort them in verse 1 when he says, don't, be, don't let your hearts be troubled, okay? Just settle down. I see you. I see you where you're at. I see what's going on in your life right now. I see what's in there. But just settle down because I got this, man. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I've got it. In verse 2, like the song we said, in my father's house there are many rooms. And he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go before you and I'm going to prepare a place. Because I want to be nice when you get there. And I want you to like it when, it, when you get there, okay? And I'm going to go and I'm going to fix it up and I'm going to prepare this place for you. And then I'm going to come back for you. And then he says in verse 4, and by the way, you know the way that I'm going anyway. You know where I'm going. And so here's the next question for you this morning. Do you know where Jesus is going? Do you know where he's going? I mean, we do understand that all this is going to work out, right? It's going to work out if we follow Jesus. It's, it might be difficult. doesn't mean it's going to be easy. But oftentimes we're more like Thomas, aren't we? You're leaving. What do you mean we know where you're going? Where are you going? I don't know where you're going. Where are you at? Man, I don't know about you, but I get trouble when I don't know where my kids are at. Where are my kids? Why won't they answer the phone? Where am I going to go? How am I going to fit through this? How am I going to help pay for school? How are we going to do this? What are you doing, God? Why did you place me here in this time? Why is all this going on? Why, God? 
Oh, we know that God works out all things together for good, right? He's going to work it out. But then when something happens, and I'm telling everybody else that. I'm telling you that every week. God's going to do something. God's going to work out. But then it hits in my house, and you're like, oh, I'm losing my flipping mind, right? Lord, why? Where? What's going on? How's this going to work out? I don't know what's going on. And so in verse 6 is where we're really going to start to unpack this and hopefully it'll bring it together. Because Jesus says a lot in this verse. Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I'm the way. Whatever you're going through, whatever direction you're headed, whatever's calling you, whatever's trying to pull you away, he says, hey, don't, don't get mixed up because I'm the way. Don't let people start leading you down another path. Don't try to figure out another way if it's pulling you away from me because I am the way no matter what you're facing. Don't give up on God. No matter what roadblocks are in, no matter what you're dealing with in your life, don't give up on me because I'm the way. I'm the bulldozer. I'm the one that's going to smooth the path up so that you can walk. And he says, I am the truth. Whatever other voices that you're hearing, whatever the, the television and the social media is trying to get you to do, and those voices in your head that are lying to you, he says, don't listen to them because I am the truth. Listen to my voice and forget the rest of them because I'm not going to lead you astray. He says, I am the truth. And then he says, I am the life. Whatever you're, every, other thing you're trying to do, you're trying to possess, you're trying to gain, you're trying to accomplish, he said, man, don't get caught up in all that and forget about me because I'm the life. That stuff's going to lie to you. There's a generation when we grow up as adolescents and the world's offering us dope and sex and all this stuff and to fit in over here and to act like this and dress like this and it doesn't matter how you live and do whatever you want to do and Jesus says that stuff's not going to give you life I am the life he says stay with me I am the way I am the truth I am the life and we say well that's good I like that good job thank you Jesus but that still doesn't tell me where I'm going you're telling me to press on you're telling me to pursue but where am I going and so when Jesus says in verse 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and then he says this. And he says, no one comes to the Father, somebody say the Father, except through me. And so this is what I want us to see for a moment today. Jesus is the way to the Father. He's the way to the Father. He is the truth about the Father. He is the life that comes from the Father. Jesus says, no one comes to the Father. He said, this is where I'm going back to. This is where I came from. This is who I belong to, and this is where I'm going back to, and this is where I want to lead you. I want to lead you back to the Father. Now, this is a little bit different than, than just regular church, and I, I, wanna, I just I want us to consider it, and I want us to understand, because so many of us, we don't understand the Father that loves us. So much that he sent his son for us. He doesn't just put up with us. He's not looking at us with a list of rules. And every time we mess up, he strikes us down or he, he brings something against us, man. This is a father that loves us that so much that he sent his son for us. He didn't do it because it was the right thing to do. He did it because he loves us so much. You understand the word of God. This is not just a book of rules and regulations and ways of living. But this is the greatest love story that's ever been written written that ever will be written it's a story about this God this father in heaven that loved us so much that he created everything he created the heavens and the earth the stars the sky the moon he separated the land he created a perfect atmosphere that was conducive for life to live in it and he did it all so that we could live here and then he formed us and he made us because he wanted a relationship he wanted to walk and talk and be a part of our life and he wanted us to do it in a way that we would we would shout his glory Glory to the earth that the world would see that we are the children of God and we all know the story that we blew it we made bad choices we rebelled against God we did what we wanted to do church was boring we didn't understand it we thought it was for old people right and so we turned away from God we went our own way but even in the separation when we were split and cut off from God he was still loving us he was still forming a plan and ultimately he sent his son Jesus to redeem us 
to reconcile us, to restore us back to the Father. He is the way and the truth and the life, not just out of trouble, not to a better job, not to an easy life, not to the health and wealth, not to heaven, not to the streets of gold. That's all part of it. That's all part of it, but that's the overflow, man. Where we're going is back to the Lord, back to the Father. Many of us have come to the Lord. We want eternal life, right? We want eternal life. We're scared of hell. There's a whole generation that accepted Jesus because we're scared of hell. Sounds bad. So we hear somebody tell us, well, this is the way you do it. You accept Jesus. And so we accept Jesus, and they tell us we're forgiven, and they tell us we're promised of heaven, and that's right, and that's true. But I just want us to take it a step further. I want us to see the ultimate goal, the ultimate thing that we're going for is not just eternal life. We want eternal life. This is what Jesus says about eternal life in John 17. One through three, Jesus spoke these, when he spoke these things, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. He says, glorify your son so that they may glorify you. As you even as you've given me all authority over all flesh, to whom all you have given him, that he may give eternal life. So here it comes, you ready? Jesus says, you want eternal life? In verse three, this is eternal life, that they would know you. That they would know the true God. That they would know the Father in heaven and Jesus Christ, the Son whom you've sent. See, I want you to understand that if we want eternal life, it's more than just saying a prayer. It's about knowing God. There's a whole culture that knows about Jesus and we claim that we believe in Jesus, but we don't have the right picture. We don't know the Father. God wants you to know Him as Father. He wants you to know Him closely and intimately where you're not ashamed and you're not afraid of what He knows about you, but you come to Him like this loving dad and you cry out to Him like Jesus when He said, Abba, Father. We know about church. We know a little bit about Jesus. We talk about the Holy Spirit so we can sound spiritual. But how much do we know about the Father? And Thomas is like, how do we know the way? How do we know the Father? And Jesus said to him, this is it. This is how you know the Father in John 14, 7. If you had known me, you would have known my Father. And from now on, you do know him because you've seen him. You see, we get to know the Father through the Son. The Holy Spirit brings revelation. Jesus came from the Father. He came to reveal the Father. Hebrews 1.3 says that Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. He is the exact representation of His nature. Jesus came from the Father. He made a way for us to get to the Father. Then Jesus went back to the Father. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, right? He came from Him. He made a way to Him. He went back so that we could follow And here's the thing, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, they're one. They're close. And He wants us to become one. That's what He prayed in John 17. Father, help them be one even as we are one. He wants us to be in the family. He wants us to be a part and know that we belong. Where are we going? We're going to God the Father. How do we get there? Through the Son, Jesus. Is it easy? No, usually not. It can be difficult. A lot of bumps along the way. That's why he's given us his presence, the Holy Spirit, to help us keep going. Our deal is we have to do is keep following. Keep following Jesus. He spoke to them in John 8, 12. He said, I am the light of the world. Somebody say, he is the light. He who follows me in the darkness, he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In other words, he said, don't. He declares, he makes a declaration and an invitation. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the light. I bring light to all men. I bring, I am the light of life. And then he invites us to come. I'm the light of the world. Now come and follow me. He didn't just say, hear it and believe it and sit on your duff. But he said, follow me. He said, pursue me. He said, come after me. And here's the thing about light that we know. If you've ever been out in the dark, you know this. If you're close to the light, you can kind of see right here. But the further away you get from the light, and even though you can see the light, when the further away we get from the light, what happens is the darkness starts to try to close in on us. Anybody with me? And that's why he says, follow me and stay up with me so that you will have the light of life and the darkness won't won't get on you. 
See, that's what happened to me as a young boy. I was a pretty good kid, but the further away I got away from the light, the further, the more I got off into some places I shouldn't be where the light wasn't real bright, the darkness started closing in on me. And then it was dark, and you think nobody's really looking, and it really doesn't matter anyway. And pretty soon the darkness has its arms around you. And what we have to do is get up and we got to run to the light. we got to pursue the light because we know that where the, darkness is, where the light is, the darkness cannot be. Amen? Follow. So this is a really, it's a basic message, but I believe it's important. Of seeing God as a good, good father that we sing about. It's not just a song that makes us feel good, that sounds good. But it's really who he is. He's perfect in all of his ways. And he loves us. Yeah, he disciplines us. But it's because he loves us. He loves us. He carries us through. He keeps coming after us. And here's the thing that it, it's so humbling. It's so humbling but he really wants us to know how he loves us and he wants us to accept this relationship. See, th 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 this, this thought, this revelation from God brought a big shift in my life. You've heard my story, most of you, and in 1993, out of desolation, out of brokenness, out of poverty, out of destruction, out of death, I cry out to God. He saves me. He came alive inside of me. But here's the thing. For about five or six years, I'm trying to do stuff. I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to, 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 you know, do it. And I'm frustrated because I can't understand what I'm really trying to do. And everything I do is not working out the way I want it. And it's not easy. And nothing's really happening. And so I'm just getting frustrated. But then in about 99, about 2000, when this really just exploded... That it wasn't about me doing good, but all of a sudden this time when I meet with God, he begins to show me this good, good father that he is. And he loves me. And it's no longer about me winning enough. It's no longer about me never messing up. It's no longer about me scoring enough points or making enough money or impressing enough people. It's understanding that he loves me the way I am. He loves me unconditionally. He loves me and he's got great things for me. And I don't have to perform for him. I just have to receive his love and then it begins to to change our life because now our heart is changed and he breaks us down because we realize that no matter how jacked up I am and no matter where I've run off to and all the dark places and all the times I did the things in secret when nobody was looking and he saw them all and he still loved me and he still sent his son And this is the father love when he scoops us up when we turn to him. He tells us, I'm proud of you. And he tells us you're going to do better. And he tells us you're going to make it. And this is the reason that so many of us, especially men, have a jacked up view of God. And we can't receive his love because we see God the way we see our fathers. And so there's a generation of a bunch of hard butts, right? We had hardcore dads. And they were pushing us because they loved us. And they, they, they got on us because they loved us. But at the time, we didn't realize it. And our, our, our fathers are showing us this, this thing. And so we see God that way. The same way with, with this generation, it's more about rejection because there's so many homes that don't have a dad in them. The dad's not around. And so in this generation, it's more like, well, nobody could love me because my dad don't care. And he just left me. And it really doesn't matter. And so we see God this way. We either see him as a hard old so-and-so, oh, you know, that we're never going to be good enough. Or we see him as somebody that doesn't give a rip about us. And we can't believe. And we're scared to really trust God. because. And we need to understand, I'm just whatever now, but... Let me tell you something, man of God. Let me tell you something, woman of God. The highest calling on your life is to show your children and to show the people around you and lead them to the Father. This is what a marriage is about. This is what a parenting is about. It's not about us doing everything, making life easy. It's about us showing our children how the way that they should go, leading them to the Father because they're not going to find it in the world. They're not going to make enough money. They're not going to have enough sex. They're not going to do enough dope. They're not going to do it, man. It's when we come to the Father man and at the end of all of this this is where we're headed this is where we're trying to get to 
Can I tell you heaven's awesome? Can I tell you healing's awesome? Can I tell you the blessings and the promises and all that? It's awesome. But it pales in comparison to where we're going to be with the Father, man. And that He loves us and He wants us and He wants us to know. He wants to give a new heart that we've been broken, we've been hurt, we've been mauled. He wants to give us His Holy Spirit to empower us to live as a child of God. And until we really understand what it's all about and who we are in Christ, He loves you. Yeah, I know some of you, you know, we've been through it. And you're saying, well, how can... You tell me, man, with where I'm at and right now in my life and all the stuff I'm dealing with, and you're going to sit there and tell me God is good and he loves me, and I'm going to tell you yes. Don't listen to the voices, man. God loves you, and we may go through some sucky stuff, and it may be difficult, but at the end of the time, man, keep following Jesus, man. Keep following him because he's leading you to the Father. And all this stuff that we're going through, it's going to pale in comparison when we step into glory forever and ever and ever as a child of God. This won't amount to a hill of beans, but what it's trying to do and the enemy's trying to use is to keep you from going where God's calling you to come and sit at his table. God the Father wants his sons and his daughters to follow Jesus towards him. And as we do, it reveals to other people the way to the Father. Somebody's watching you, and you're going to have the opportunity to lead them somewhere. Let us pursue him. I like this quote. I used to say it all the time. Jesus was the Son of God. And the Son of God came into this earth, and you know what he did? He became a Son of Man. And he became a Son of Man and did what he did so that sons of men, you and me, could become sons of God. So that we could know that we belong in the family of God. And I just want to challenge you and encourage you, man. Let's keep pursuing him. Let's keep going after him. Let's keep running towards him with complete dependence. On his presence. I love communion. And I pray that you see it a little bit different today. Because sometimes we just, you know, come through line, get us a chip, get us a cracker, get us a piece of bread, dunk it, eat it, it's cool. But Jesus, when he was gathered with his disciples, the last meal, last supper, before he's going to be betrayed, and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. You see, Jesus said that he's the door. I'm the door. And see, what happened is when Jesus broke the bread, he says, I'm opening the door. I'm opening the door. And after supper was ended, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks, and he said, this is my blood, which has been shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, this do in remembrance of me. What I want you to see for just a second is this. It's not about just coming to the front of the church, eating some bread and having a little sip of juice. It's about coming home. It's about coming home. It's about remembering God calling me in Christ Jesus to come home. You see, Jesus is the door. And God the Father's up here and we're separated from him. And we can't get there. We can't get to the house of God. But Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the door. I am the gate. I am the true one. And when he broke the bread, he says, I'm opening the door. I'm opening the door. And the Father's asking you to come in here. The Father's asking you to come in here and sit down at his table and to eat a little bit of bread and to drink a little bit of this blood that I poured out to forgive you and just understand that in this setting, I love you. To understand that in this setting, I'm going to care for you. I'm going to be with you. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to impress. You don't have to do the stuff. Receive it and be a child of God. Pray with me. Father, we love you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for each one that's here today, God. 
We thank you that you're a good, good Father. And I just pray that in this moment today, that for some of us, if there's anybody that doubts or questions or we're not sure or we just need cleansing, number one, that we would simply say, I need Jesus today. But I want you to know if you've struggled with your identity and you're not sure in your belonging and you're frustrated and trying to do and it's not really working out, can I tell you, God wants you to know that you're a child of His. That Jesus came so that you could be not only cleansed, not only forgiven, but so that you could become a child of God. That you would be known by the Father. And if you're not sure about that, or you've never had that revelation, and today you do, can I tell you, Jesus wants you to know that if you accept Him, He cleanses you, forgives you, makes it new. But what He really does is brings you back to Dad. If you've never accepted Jesus in this manner, or you just need a fresh knowledge of who you are in him would you just simply raise your hand today and said i need jesus thank you jesus anybody else thank you lord your dad loves you he's different than your earthly dad so father i just pray that we mo you would move in this time as we come and sit at your table we receive from your cup god that you would speak to us that you would confirm in us who we are as a child of God. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Music team, come. You guys come help me, please.